Today we're going to take a look at the very first White Dwarf, well, the very first weekly White Dwarf. This is issue one from February 2014. Smacking bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. I'm Rob Bear, and this is your Warhammer flashback. So this bad boy came out in February 1st of 2014, and that's when GW really started to escalate their whole boom, get everything out the door every week, do all these splash releases, and it just went gangbusters from there. We saw so many weeks of new products. I think they said at some point in 2014 that they put out 128 new products, which was a marked departure from the summer of 2013 where they didn't put out a whole lot over the summer and a lot of people kind of got bored, so to speak. <laughs> I know I did. Uh, you know, a lot of people were playing Magic and stuff like that and it was noticeable, it was noticeable. But so they were basically slowing things down in order to ramp things up in February and that's when they started going to the weekly format and the visions and all sorts of stuff. And I thought since they're going back to the monthly format here in September, that it would be cool to go back to the very first issue, you know, 131 issues ago to take a closer look at, you know, kind of how what things changed along the way and maybe give us an idea of where we're going from here because we know it's going to be a 166 page you know basically magazine monthly magazine but we don't really have any idea you know like what exactly is going to come in it so i would imagine this will if you kind of compare the changes in here to the changes you know um that we've seen in or what's in here to the changes till now that will give us a good idea right so one of the things that went <clears throat> early on was the opening salvo kind of section here with the staff. They don't they don't really do that anymore. It's more, uh, it's an overleaf of models. You know, you open it up and you see a whole bunch of ton of models and everybody's like, ooh, it looks good. And then the contents are kind of down here type deal. And over here, they kind of got rid of all the new releases in one spot. Now, I don't know whether that was to all the, you know, because of all the leaks, the White Dwarf leaks, and somebody could just take a picture and be like, ah, this is what's coming out this week. And then, you know, it'll go all over the internet. But they started doing it sectionalized, so if you want to do that, you'd have to take like, you know, 10 pictures or whatever. But, you know, stuff still gets out. We see it every week, well, up until, I guess, issue 131. But we did see it every week. There's always a leak somewhere in some language. I imagine the same thing is going to be true with the, you know, the monthly magazine, even though there'll only be one big leak for the month, I guess. But either way, it's <laughs> when you put out a... a a publication like this somebody's bound to get it early and put it on the internet like that's just the way it is like if you accidentally send out an iPhone or you leave an iPhone sitting in the bar it's probably gonna be on the internet in like an hour cuz you know that's just how humans are it's it's silly but people want to know and people know that people want to know and well you kind of know how that goes so the first issue back in February there was only I think it was four Four weeks that month. It was a shortened week, and and to celebrate the the shortened month, I guess uh, they put out dwarfs, right? <laughs> Get it? And then the next month they had the uh, the new Imperial Knight, and it kind of uh, kind of escalated from there. So these guys came out over uh, that whole like four week period, basically. There was a lot more uh, a lot more models and such, but there was a whole bunch of dwarf models that came out and. They look great for their time, but you know, a year later, basically, it was in the end times, and then, you know, a year and a half later, back to Age of Sigmar, and uh, technically these guys, dwarf dwarfs, don't really have you know, a battle to them or anything quite yet, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with the Steelhead guys. I'm I'm super stoked to see what they come out with. And then, so they talk about all that, and then some Black Library releases for back then, and they were talking about the Visions that was coming out. Now this is a 236 page magazine here. Now we're scaling it back, it's only a 166 in White Dwarf. So I feel like it's going to be a happy medium to advertisements, to content, to big picture kind of splash things. Now I'm hoping they keep in the paint splatter. I can't tell you the last time I saw Jervis Johnson in a uh, in a uh, White Dwarf feature here. That This might have been uh, the very last time, to be quite honest. And then it's talking about the Tyranids, which had just come out the month before, in January of 2014. They got into some hobby sections right here, which, you know, the paint splatter we've all known, uh, come to know and love. 
very cool stuff. And then of course, sprues and glue, which we don't see as much of anymore. They're kind of taking that out in, um, uh, in substitution for other features in the book, you know, but it would be cool to see that come back for the new one. And then they have the rules for this little man right here. Talk about him. And remember every week you got a new data scroll or war scroll rather that came out uh, for the particular release that year or that week. So then it kind of got into everything there and there was no teaser in the back. I don't know exactly when they started the teaser. I want to say it was like... It was definitely more than six months ago. It might have been like eight months ago or so. More features on the Tyranids, because remember they had just come out. So you can kind of see here, they hadn't really got into all the full army features yet. They kind of reserved those for White Dwarf, uh, or the Visions rather. And they also didn't really have the, they splashed Blanjitsu in here, but then took it out and mostly went into the Visions. And then you can see they had the sprues and glue, but they took that out kind of in lieu of the little um, half page feature on basically how to put your stuff together. So they're cramming more and more content and you can almost say they're cramming more ads in the front, give or take, depending on which issue, because there was quite a few ad heavy uh, issues out there, I feel like, um, when they, they switched to the weekly format. but. Now we saw, we saw more, an emphasis on more rules and also paint splatter. So that would be cool to see that continue going forward because if you're going to spend, I guess it's going to be about $8 on a new White Dwarf every month instead of the $4 or whatever it is, I think it's actually more now, uh, every week, then there has to be some sort of you know happy medium so they get paid for their publications and can continue publishing them. Now. All these caveats aside, they came out with a great start um, start collecting Age of Sigmar magazine. That uh, that's another video up on the channel here. Check that out because if that is any indication of where the White Dwarf is going, man, I am so on board for eight dollars an issue. That thing looks amazing. Actually, I'll just show it to you right here. It's right here. Um, so I mean, it's. There it is right there. It's the full-on magazine. It's probably not 166 pages. It's actually not numbered page-wise. Oh yeah, it is, 93. Well, there you go. So this thing cost eight bucks, but it also came with this little man right here, right? So the, the one where they launched Age of Sigmar last year, it comes with that guy again. So they just kind of booted him up. But this has a ton of awesome features in it. Like it goes through like the whole history. I mean, just look at the full bleed pics here. Like they're going over the history of Sigmar, almost like a comic book up to the point we're at now. Shows a lot of battle reports. I mean, it almost looks like it's a codex in and of itself, right? And then it gets to some ads. And to be honest, these ads are more palatable than what they do right now. You know what I mean? Like these are totally acceptable to me personally. And more stuff here, you know, talking about uh, different, you know factions or whatever and then it gets into heavy metal showcase so they got all the stuff here just and even a hobby you know like this is a great format if this is what the white dwarf becomes and then there's whole sections in here on how to paint like the, the how to paint guys on the how to paint set are in here talking about the paint system there's 12 pages of hobby stuff in 12 pages of how to paint stuff in here right so it's there's a ton of stuff in here and then it gets into playing battles they actually go through the phases, the four page rules, but basically spread it out with more pictures, right? Which again, might not be something for White Dwarf, but just the fact that they have this and now it's an, basically an easier to read and kind of follow along with version of the, the new Age of Sigmar rules. Plus they're kind of updated with the FAQs. There's a couple things in there that I noticed are explained a little bit better. And then it gets into, oh, and then it goes into another section where they're just basically like, hey, beginners, tabletop, boom, primer, couple colors, couple colors, boom, you're ready to go. Same here for all the models, right? In the starter set. So this is a great, man, this, is what I would like to see White Dwarf become. A little bit thicker with a little bit more features, but there's 12 pages of how to paint in here. You know, all sorts of stuff like this, this going into this, this is way better and way better looking than any monthly White Dwarf we ever saw. It's better than Visions. I mean, Visions was great, but they got like the, you know, the, the full bleed pictures and stuff, but there's no real article. There's like four paragraphs at the top in a different language. So you can kind of see what they're doing. They're like triple dipping and quadruple dipping on their production value, which is, it takes a lot to produce this stuff money-wise. Trust me, I know. But, you know, and I, I could see where they want to save some money and not have to do like a German edition, a Spanish edition, blah, 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 blah. But I feel like to really be more specific, they're not going to be able to cut those corners. And I think they know that because there's multiple language editions of the White Dwarf. So 
that being said, I could see them saving more money off, off of that as well, right? Because if you're not putting out a weekly publication in multiple languages and now you're putting out a monthly one, I don't see the, I don't see where they couldn't save money at that point. But let me tell you what, if we start seeing something like this as the new monthly white dwarf, as opposed to visions, I am all on board. I will pay that $8 all day because this is an incredible looking, an incredible layout uh, to a magazine that I've ever seen from Games Workshop. Like, I'm so impressed with this. And we'll go into this in more detail in a separate video. So make sure you look out for uh, that here on the channel, if not already up uh, very shortly here on Spiky Bits. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.